Hi, so in this Microsoft Teams tutorial, we're going to be looking at architecture, what gets set up when you set a team up, because it sets up quite a lot of different things in the background. Some of the pitfalls, some of the implications. So by the end of the video, you'll know everything you need to know about setting up a team. I'm Gavin Jones, founder and director at MeTime, where we help organizations be more efficient, save their employees time for increased well-being and make increased sales. Happening to use Microsoft 365 to do that. So if you're interested in finding out the opportunities that you could work in a better way for your organization, if you've got inkling that you're not as efficient as you could be, book a call using the link in the description below. We've got new videos on Microsoft at work coming out at least every week. So make sure you hit subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified whenever they come out. But let's get on to this short video. So when you set a team up, we've just got a few a little build on these slides here. When you set a team up, it sets up quite a lot of other stuff in the background. So in the, if you set a team in the front end of Teams, so in the Teams application, click New Team. If you don't see that, it's probably because your organization has turned off new team creation for you. So you, you might have a process to go and get someone to do that. Assuming it's available, you can click New Team. Um, that sets up a team. So when we talk about a team, that's everything in the Teams bit of Teams that's got like a little icon and everything underneath is a channel. So you always get a general channel, which now Microsoft have allowed you to hide to that general channel, which you couldn't do for a long time, and then create any other channels you want. In terms of architecture, when you set that team up, you get the channels for each channel, you get a number of tabs, so you always get posts, files, I've got a wiki in this slide because it's old, but a OneNote gets set up when you set up the team. And in the back end, it's actually creating an Office 365 group or Microsoft 365 group, as it might now be called, which sets up a SharePoint, a whole SharePoint site, a Teams site, which was called Teams site before Microsoft invented Teams. Uh, but it sets up a Teams site for you and a document library. The document library then sets up folders for each channel. So if you, as soon as you set the team up, it's got a document library in a SharePoint site in a Microsoft in a Microsoft 365 group with a folder called General, which holds where the files live in the General tab. And then because it's a, a fully fledged SharePoint site, which most people I'd say don't realize or don't use, is you then get the ability to have pages. So like the functionality that you would use to create an intranet in SharePoint you pretty much get all the same functionality when you set a team up. So anyone in the team can create pages in the SharePoint site that's associated with the team. Because if you're in the team, you've got access to everything else in the team by default, including creating pages, which can be useful for meeting stuff. And if you want to know more about that, here's a video I did a while ago now about how to use SharePoint pages to sort of collate stuff together for meetings, which might be useful. And you get the ability to have lists. So uh, SharePoint list has been around for a long time. Microsoft rebadged it as Microsoft lists. Um, so now you can have a private list and one that lives in SharePoint. But if you create a list in the team, it's actually creating a list in the SharePoint site. And then some other things get set up when you set the team up. So it always creates a new plan for the whole team, which you can use, or you can create multiple plans in Planner within one team, or you can have multiple views of the same planner. So you could have, which has tripped people up in the, pa in the past. And if you want to know more about planner, check out this video next. It sets up a shared OneNote, which it always did, but now OneNote is more important because it recreate, it replaces Wiki. So whenever you did a new channel, you used to create a Wiki tab. Uh, if you don't know what Wiki is, we've got this video here, but it's not now available anyway. So it might be a waste of time. Um, but just for info, now OneNote is created for the whole team and every time you do a new channel, OneNote actually creates a new section which you can't see from the tab in the channel. But if you opened it in the desktop app or you opened it in the web, you'd see all the sections and they would match the channels just like the folders to store the files match the channel names. Also sets up a shared inbox. Uh, which if you set it, that depending on where you set the team up from, which come onto a few nuances at the end of the video, it's hidden from the global address list by default. Some might say it's a feature, some might say it's a bug. Just had this with a my latest client. Depending on how you set the team up, changes some of the settings to do with the group. And one of the main 
problems is when you do a channel meeting, and if you want to know more about meetings, channel meetings, check out this video next. If you did a meeting in a channel, that's really beneficial because it keeps all the chat that you've got in the meeting in the channel. It keeps all the recordings, the transcripts or the assets together in the channel, which is what you want to do because the channel should be like for a specific bit of work that you're working on or an area of work that you're working on. And so to jump out into chat when you do a meeting and have all the stuff live there, you're going to lose stuff. So to have a channel meeting is beneficial. Microsoft doesn't seem to prioritize channel meetings at the same pace as normal meetings, but that's an aside. But what does happen is you, the behavior should be you create a channel meeting and then it only invite people that you want that meeting invite to appear in their Outlook and go into their calendar. Everyone else, it just appears in the team for info and they can see the meetings going on and join it if they want to. But it should work like only people who are invited get the, the meeting invite. Depending on how you set the team up, when it was set up, whether there's a bug or not, sometimes, even if you've got all the right settings on, people get invited, everybody in the team gets invited to every channel meeting, which is clearly not what most people want to happen. And if that is a problem, seemingly there's no way to reverse it centrally. You have to instruct everybody to go individually into a certain setting and turn it off, which you can find if you have a quick Google of it, but is a bit of a pain. So I was always advised if you set the team up from the front end, like into Teams and click Add Team, I'm 99% sure that doesn't happen. That only happens if you set a team up in the admin center or if you set a group up first and then add a team, which I think if you do at the back end, it's technically what it's doing in the background. Um, if you set up a team up from the front end in Teams, you shouldn't have that issue uh, architecture wise. So just a couple of watch outs is that if, if you go into a channel and you go to the files tab, that's looking into the SharePoint site, into that folder, technically, that's named the same as the channel. People can go in so that if you're a member of a team, you got access to everything in the team by default. Not true for private channels or shared channels, because shared channels are just a special version of a private channel. Uh, if you have a private channel, it actually sets up a separate, whole separate little team site and a separate document library. Um, and it's still at the time of recording, which has been the same for years and years, which Microsoft still haven't fixed, even with the new planner, which you can check out here. You can't have a plan, a planner plan in a private channel. So if you need some privacy away from the main team, then, and you want to use Planner, you pretty much have to create a separate team. Um, but what I was just going to say is that people have access into everything by default, so they can, they have got access to jump into SharePoint if they want to see the files that way. They've got access to make SharePoint pages. If someone creates or puts a file or a folder in the root here, directly in SharePoint, so say we had another one called XY folder XYZ, that someone had just done in SharePoint in this same view and same hierarchy, you wouldn't be able to see those files in Teams because when you go into a channel, it's going into that folder that's named the same as the channel to look where the files are. And because there's no channel that's named XYZ, then you can't then see any of those files from Teams unless someone linked them in, but then they wouldn't know where they lived. If you create a channel in Teams, that creates a folder in SharePoint and then they're both linked. But if you, uh, if people are going in straight into SharePoint, you do have the ability for people start putting stuff in the root folder and, and missing stuff. Similarly, with like I said, with OneNote, if you open the whole OneNote, there's a section for each channel. If someone then created a new section that wasn't linked to a channel in that particular OneNote, then you wouldn't be able to see those notes from Teams unless someone linked back into them. So finish just with some general advice, which if you watched a lot of this channel, you would have heard before, but if you're new to the channel, in terms of setting up your architecture, think Teams first. So if you've already got loads of other SharePoint sites and maybe some shared drives, maybe using Dropbox, 
think teams first. What's the simplest structure you can get with teams because teams sets up so much other stuff in the background. And the simplest is usually to have a larger team than most people would set up if they were just left to their own devices. Usually organizations just turn teams on, people just have a play, set up some teams, maybe they're little sub teams and maybe like between five to 10 people max are in a team. And organizations end up with a lot of proliferation, prolifer if it's mean to say, proliferation of teams across the organization, people end up losing stuff because they don't know which team it's in. They've got more channels and more teams than people. And every time, as we've just shown, every time it's a team, it sets up so much stuff in the, in the background, so many folders, so many SharePoint sites that you just end up losing stuff. Worse than that is then people still use chat. And when you use chat, the file, if you share a file there, assume, depending on how you shared it and not linked it, if you just shared it from where it is, it creates a different version in the OneDrive of the person that shared that file. And so you end up losing files there because then people are like, well, don't know the version. It's not the same version of the one in the team. It's created a different version. Um, and worse than that, people then still use internal email and end up attaching stuff to an email. And that's then not linked to the live version that's going around usually because people don't use the cloud one. They use, use the normal attachments. So if you, you can reduce a lot of wasted time just by getting your team's architecture right, which is what we help organizations through to start, because that's the one thing that makes everything easier or irrelevant. If you want to do it yourself, start with an organization-wide team and then think of specific reasons why that won't work, usually because of privacy. But if everybody can see everything and you're working out in the open, that creates way more efficient way of working because you can pull other people into conversations, you can, turn notifications off where you don't want to uh, get interrupted. And it's basically like creating a digital equivalent of an open plan office, a well-designed open plan office, where everyone can see everything else that's going on. You can overhear conversations and, and you know, suggest things. It's a way faster way of working rather than just working in silos and then sharing stuff. And then it's like, oh, well, I was working on this as well, but you didn't know. Um, it's trying to create an open way of working. And clearly there's going to be needs for privacy. So usually senior management, HR, finance are obvious ones where you don't want that to be shared because remember anyone in the team can see anything else by default, including all the files in every channel that they're unlikely to. They'll have to go through and find it. But, um, but yeah, clearly financials, HR stuff and stuff that senior management need to talk about would be private. So then you either need a private channel for those or a separate team. So usually a handful of teams and only have a channel where there's enough posts going on in the channel that there's, there's, there's too much noise that no one can possibly keep up with what everything that's going on and then create a new, new channel. So manage with less channels than you think you need as well. In one channel, if you use threaded activity correctly, you can get away with having way fewer channels than you think you need. And if you want to help yourself get up to speed with all of Teams, knowing this architecture now, we've got a free course available on YouTube, four hours long, which you can go through at your own pace. And uh, if you want to remove the ads or get some bite-sized chunks of that same one, it's available on Udemy or through supporting the channel, through joining the channel on YouTube, as well as some other courses, some of which have sold for multiple thousands of pounds uh, which goes through changing your whole organization in a bit more de depth as well if you just want someone to come in and see how you're working and recommend some ways of working better that's usually the first point of call uh, for a whole organization if you want some help doing that then book a call using the link in the description below but Thanks just for watching. It really helps us in the algorithm, as does giving the video a like. If you've got time to click that thumbs up button before you leave, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new video comes out. We've got new videos on Microsoft at work coming out at least every week. But thanks for watching so far. I'll see you in the next one.